audio is already, I just hit it a minute ago. <clears throat> Welcome back to the studio. Welcome back. Nikki, Nikki Raftelis. Yes. You said that very well. Um, Nikki, I would have never been able yeah, to no, say that. Yeah, no, he killed it. Nikki Morto. Yep. Raftelis, that's, uh, what is it, Slavic? Greek. Greek. It is. Oh. I'm not Greek, though. You never went to the Greek church here in Lewiston? No. Do you ever go to the Greek festivals? No. Mm -mm. Do you drink that Greek alcohol, that Rocky, that tastes really terrible? No. Uzo. Black licorice. Black licorice. Uzo. Is that the Uzo that tastes yeah. like that? <clears throat> Sounds awful. It is. But Sounds I awful. like a lot of Greek stuff, though. I yeah. like your name. Thanks. Artistically, you go by Nikki Morto of just... Morto Viventi. Yes. Vivente. Yeah. Vivent Vivente. Vivente. Yeah. Death, life, something like that? Life, death, life after death, giving death life, that sort of thing. Yep. Play on words, Italian uh, style. Well, why don't you go ahead and explain to us, you know, what you do, what your style is, and why this is all relevant? Sure. Um, I'm a bone artist. Um, <laughs> That's what you call yourself? I do. I'm not laughing. I, I just didn't, I did never yeah, heard I you just, say that. Yeah. No, I, um, I don't, you know do all taxidermy i don't do all wet specimens you know i just consider myself a bone artist that so, is cool yeah how do you take up wanting to get into being a bone art artist uh like how does one get there yeah. or it, how would one it feels much more specific in in a direction of art yeah uh this just kind of took off on its own um i didn't plan for it um, just to kind of give some light as to how it started. Do we kind of want to do that? Yeah. yeah? Um, so long story short, um, my son was about one years old and I was, uh, in a position just looking for <clears throat> kind of like a, I called it like a side hustle of sorts. Um, but I just mainly wanted to stay home with my son and before, um, I was making, I was saving all of his baby food jars and I was making face scrubs, hand scrubs, stuff like that with like all natural things. And so, so you're somebody who's always kind of, you've made your own stuff. You know, entrepreneur. Yeah. Entrepreneur for sure. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I get that from my dad for sure. He's all like right. that too. Okay. Um, but he'll come into play in a second. So I had just, you know, played with the ideas and, and really, I mean, I, I have a, uh, a degree in graphic design. I went to school for communications. I have a bachelor's degree. So I took a lot of marketing and advertising classes. Didn't know that I would at some point implement them into my almost everyday life at this point. Um, but they did, they came in handy just with, you know, making the facial scrubs and promoting on social media and kind of just like building a small following just with that. You know, people were super hyped on it for some reason. It was cool though. Um, and I was super appreciative because it did. It kept my head above water with our little family at that point. So fast forward maybe like, you know, six months later, my dad comes to visit and he lives up north. He lives in Brooks, um, which is about 30 minutes east of Bangor. And he said that he had a box of skulls for me. Um, <laughs> he had acquired them and knew that his child was very strange and would probably love them, and I did. And I didn't know what I was going to do with them, so I did a lot of research on how to clean skulls. And some of them had, you know, bullet bullet uh, holes in the head and stuff. So I was looking up, like, skull repair and just... Did your dad... Have you guys talked about that? About the box of bones yeah. and skulls? Have you talked Started about that since? everything. Yes. <clears throat> Definitely. Has he ever admitted, like, why he might have intended to give you these? He just he knew. Never... He, he just knows I'm a weirdo and would have appreciated it one way, whether it was, you know, decorating my house or, mm -hmm. you know, it was never, it was never like a conversation like, Hey, you know, trying to make some money off of this. It was, Hey, I have this. What are you going to do with it? You know, and, that's, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty interesting. Like when you talked about how all this sort of manifested, you were at a place where you really wanted, you really wanted something. Mm -hmm. You wanted to be home with your child. Yep. You wanted to maybe make money of some type. It starts with creams and whatnot and just sort of like ball Evolves. slowly starts to roll. Yes. And then now I guess where we're getting is it's rolled and, and snowballed into something else altogether. But yeah. but it's just totally, and it's getting it's, crazier. It, yeah, it's it's your own biz where here you are, your kid's like is he in daycare now? And like 
you know, you're, is, is he home with you right now? No, he's in school. Oh, so he's in school, but here you are. You have like this business that morphed from just you manifesting it. Yeah. And now Definitely. it's turned into like this very eccentric art. It's not face cream, uh, face creams no. anymore. No, but it isn't. Um, but like being at a place where like you know I don't want to use the word desperate, but you kind of were desperate to yeah. be home with your son For and like sure. do anything to make that little bit of cash. And now here you are. It's like it's your gig that you do. Yeah, and I'm sure that we'll get into it as well. But and it it it, it really did evolve from just. It wasn't even an idea because it, you know what I mean? You understand it was just literally a box of just yep. things. Yep. But uh, it did. It, it, in, I lived in South Carolina at one point. At one point, I was in South Carolina. I was in North Carolina. I was in Maine. Just bounced all over the place. Uh, when I was in South Carolina, I would be home all day with my son. We had one vehicle. My kid's dad uh, worked in. Um, Myrtle Beach, which was about 45 minutes south from where we lived. So he'd be gone all day. When he'd come back in the evening, that was my time to rock and roll before the sun went down. And I'm cruising all these back roads because I literally live in the middle of nowhere. We had a giant house, 22 square feet, you know, the carport, big backyard. But the only thing was is that it was like in the middle of a tobacco field in the middle of South Carolina. So there was nothing. You had to drive like 45 minutes to go to a grocery store or something like that. Uh, let me just take a drink here. So, yes, in the time when my kid's dad would get home to when the sun would go down, I'm going through all these back roads looking for roadkill looking for snakes, looking for whatever, whatever it is I would find, I would literally turn it into money. You know, I think they were called like a red belly snake or something like that. They're native to South Carolina. Somebody hit it and I'm like, heck yeah, 75 bucks. You know, find a couple deer that were hit off the highway, drag them, hit GPS, you know, drop a pin where it's at, go back months later, whatever the case may be. And and everything, all the knowledge and all the skills you have, it's self-taught. Yes, sir. Yeah. I almost feel like in a, like this day and age, uh, I mean, going to college and getting an education is, is definitely important. But I feel like with Google and everything else, it almost makes that sort of thing obsolete because you can just find out anything. Like oh, yeah. literally that is. information is, that is at your thing. Is that how you use it as thing. resource? Yes. Yeah. Everything is self-taught for sure. And it was just really trial and error with everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. You, you know? learn from your mistakes. Yes. You get better. Yep. Yep. Um, Does wow, the community awesome. just, uh, just out of curiosity, have you ever dealt with or do you deal with Etsy? A as little a bit. Yeah, I did at the beginning, but I just, I'm, I'm like a, I work hard for my money, just like anybody else does, right. but I just, I cannot stand the fees and I was just getting hit really hard. Mm. So, you know what I mean? It was just yeah. kind of- Yeah, you, going um, back to that or, or talking about that, you were going out for the roadkill back then, you had your clientele. You already had people who you knew, like this was pretty much gonna line up with uh, people who were interested in it. You knew sure. people who were interested in yeah, it. Yeah, thank God for social media. Social media has been like my number one platform yeah. for, you know, getting just the name out there, promoting products or even finding, you know, just like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And that and and that in itself is wild. You know, you think of somebody who's into the nitty gritty, you know, snakes, possum paws, skulls, hearts, kittens in a jar. You know, you think that they're weirdos because people do not. And that's just like human nature. You know, people don't like what they don't know automatically. Um, but some of my clientele, you know, big wig lawyers, they wanted a snake in a jar just because it would look cool on his on his whiskey, you know, his whiskey display or something. You know what I mean? I actually had whiskey with a big cobra snake sitting in there fermenting. And it was the most disgusting thing I've ever had in my entire That's life. That's pretty wow. hardcore. It was, it was uh, my brother-in-law's brother-in-law was a truck driver and would truck drive a truck through Russia. Nice. <laughs> and he got through and he got a bottle of it then. And yeah, it kind of reminds me of that kitten in the, uh, yeah. in the jar right there. It was just sitting in there. Ethically sourced. Everything I deal with, everything I touch is ethically sourced. 
So that can be a bit of a prickly point for some people out there, obviously, with what you're doing. You have to you have to get that out there because you, you have a kitten in there. I do, yes. It, but it's not like you went and just snagged one from like no. a, a mom and no, of you know, course put not. it in and like so that must this whole thing you're doing is there's there's a, a bit of controversy around this. Sure. Oh yeah. Um actually when I first started in two because this all started in two thousand fifteen, um, I had a family member now, I had started practicing uh, preserving animals for, for wet specimens. And those, I mean, go back generations, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years and whatnot, you know, um, wet specimens. I mean, I'm sure that you remember some, t- you know, in your uh, biology class or something, you know what I mean? Yes. Pigs in jars or whatever. Frogs. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Same idea. Um, and I actually had a family member messaged me and they were just so disappointed how can you do that i was practicing um on a bunch of little mice that i had bought at petco yeah you know they were already dead they were already frozen but i was practicing and they came out really amazing i positioned them and they just really looked like they were (laughs) sleeping and i was like oh my god i just did this and i was stoked and i posted it and this one family member was just like blown away in the worst way how yeah. could you do that? You know, yeah. like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> but there's no, there's no like malice for you. There's no like, ah, animals. No. I despise them. I'm mean, no. if anything, it's more of an appreciation. Sure. Isn't it? yeah. yeah. Like yesterday I went up north. Um, I went to a couple of spots that I know of that I've hit before. Um, and I went bone hunting and, you know, just, just the haul in itself that I did yesterday. I mean, how many forgotten, lost, castaway souls were those, you know, that'll get forever appreciation? It's kind of special to me. Is I, it? I like thinking of it that way. Yeah. You know, you're kind of, you know, you're you're giving them a purpose in the afterlife, I guess, right? And it's exciting for me, too. It's, yeah. it's creating, it's... Is it a ritual? Are you performing a ritual in, in essence? Uh, 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 is that how you or how would you look at it or, or what do you think of it ah uh, i wouldn't like necessarily just, refer to it as that um does it feel like magic to me most definitely yeah you know and like i was telling you earlier i if there's one thing i love in this world it's thrifting i love it. i love the thrill of the hunt shaking her head this one i yeah i know you <laughs> like it uh, <laughs> um so yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of picking up odds and ends and collecting all these skulls and having an idea and putting all the things in front of me and executing that idea. And sometimes I'm like, oh my God. Bone hunting. Mm-hmm. Where, do you, where do you find your, your hot spots? How do you, what are you doing? Like, what's your strategy? Where do you find the bones? I mean, I go, I, I walk in the woods all the time and I don't, yeah, I guess actually every once in a while. Are you while looking I though? No. Like, are, are your eyes open? No. But I mean, I have stumbled across like maybe a random bone before in my life. Well, rarely. that's it. It's more like stumbled, right? You know, it's like got to hit you almost yeah. for you to notice it. But you, you have an eye for it. My you, eyes are always and, open. And are you like looking for certain areas or just? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of it, too, is is contacts, you know, word of mouth, that type of thing. Hunters, trappers, they all just discard. They, they take what they want and they just dump the rest. You know, so those are my people that I try to seek out. I try to find those areas where all those things were discarded and I'll, and I'll take them home and I'll clean them. And that's my bread and butter. Uh, the place that I hit yesterday is, is truly like a dump spot. And if you can imagine it, it's, it's as far as the eye can see, it's power lines and it's out in the middle of nowhere in Orrington. And when you're going down this road, it's like a drop on the left-hand side. It's, it's literally just like a drop of a hill, you know? And for God knows how long people have been dumping probably, you know, animals that they shoot on their property or roadkill or their own trash. And I actually had fun digging through that because it's like, you know, layers and layers. You're pulling tarps and tarps and it's like soil and just... Wow. Years There's a lot years, of decomposing things, going on in spaces like in places. Everything like captured that. in time, yeah. Just yeah. A human body just falls out. You're just like, oh. No, well, my friend that push, I brought just yesterday. Push it back under the tarp. <laughs> I didn't see today. anything. I'm out of here. Not my friend yesterday that I brought with me, she's never done that before, and and I I 
kind of begged her to come with me because it's definitely out of her element, you know, but I just, I don't know. I, I think that it's fun to kind of see people, I don't know, maybe do something that she would never do, you know, but she did a great job, but we're out in the middle of nowhere. And she's like, Nikki, she's like, aren't you kind of scared of finding a dead person out here? And I'm like, no, I really wasn't thinking, I'm not looking for dead people. I'm looking for dead animals, you know, yeah. but luckily that hasn't happened. But yeah, no, the stuff that we found yesterday was awesome. Old bottles, little tiny, tall, you know, drink bottles, whatever. So it is yeah, kind of like, it, yeah. it, it is sort yeah. of like thrift shopping in the wild. Yeah. It's thrill of the hunt. There's no, I, for me, there's no greater high, you know, and J my friend Jamie yesterday, she had these gloves on and she's trying not to get dirty. And I'm like, you want to get over here? She's like, oh, I, I need another glove. And there I am like bare hands, just like <laughs> yeah, give everything, you know, like <laughs> I know there's more flipping stuff over, like just going nuts. So like bones, you get like furs there. Like you could easily just, you could find roadkill. Yeah, I do. Grab that and just. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been, it's been difficult the last, well, when I first moved here to, to continue more tow because I was <clears throat> temporarily staying with my mom, moved back, you know, thousand miles, kind of not kind. I did start over again. Um, and you know, she lives right in the middle of new Auburn. So there's houses everywhere. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, my family was bringing like full roadkill to the house. Like, hey, Nick, I found this raccoon. I brought it to you. <laughs> you know, it's not smooth. I put it in the driveway. I'm like, thanks. Well, you, you, you remember the night when we called you and told you that we found like a bird. It was like a crow frozen perfectly in the yes. dead of winter last year. Did you get that? Or did I my did mom? indeed. Yes. Okay, that's yes. what I thought. It was my mom this... wanted it. Yeah, no, I, I gave her I gave her a crow skull. Oh, okay, cool. I did, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, it was funny because we had known you, and it's like, I remember we, we like walked from my house to my mom's, and we saw it perfectly in the snow. It was it was a dead bird, but like there it was, and I'm just like, well, we should call Nikki. <laughs> and those are pretty rare it to was, find. It, it, it's it was, a dead crow just because they're naturally so intelligent. You know, it probably ate like a mouse or something that ate mouse killer or something you know gotcha know, but it got passed alone yeah yeah because they're pretty things. smart they know better i tried on to their feed foods? yeah well selection so they say if you continuously feed crows every day they remember your face then they start to bring like all the shiny things to you so i tried oh, that oh right and i was like birds you know getting all pumped every morning like oh <laughs> on the porch like throwing my bread no these guys did not bring anything but they shit all over our cars like for three days so me, me and adrian watched like a playground fight with a bunch of crows the other day we Ooh. saw two of them going at it and their buddies were all standing around you know like egging them on it was it was <laughs> surreal me, me and adrian just sat we were walking the dog and i'm like look at this and like, our minds were blown i remember telling him i'm like crows are real smart dude and he's like <laughs> yeah, no, they are. They're, they're what you are, are you familiar with uh, Neil Gaiman's uh, comic book series or graphic novel series, The mm -hmm. Sandman? No. Oh, one of my favorites. He, have we talked about a writer. this? Well, you and I have personally okay, before. Good. But, yes, um, one of my faves. Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing series. But uh, it, it, Dream is the uh, main character, and he's part of a family of the seven endless. Yes. There's desire, destruction, destiny, delirium. Death. Uh, death. Um, I'm leaving one out. I'm sure of it. Dementia? No. That well, that's what I'm delirium. Having, no, that's delirium. delirium. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> who used to be delight? Oh yeah, that's Remember right. Remember yep. how that plays yep. out? Went crazy. Um, and I brought that up because he would go off on these really historical and also stories that are formed in legend about characters, about neighborhoods, about in in particular with his way of telling the story, kind of English. Uh, con like towns of yesteryear seems to be a time period he would gravitate towards but he talked about um, crows and uh, one of the stories was called a rook of crows oh yeah and there was a trial by hundreds upon hundreds of crows within this area that were seated in the in the trees like we've always seen mm -hmm. so it always and he kind of lent a story to and I've seen flocks of hundreds of them together. What are they doing? Like, uh, what's being discussed? And, yeah. And he kind of gave a story of what that was. And 
I found it really fascinating. No, that's Worth, awesome. Worthwhile story. You make me want to watch. Or you, you make me want to read the whole series again. And there's a Netflix uh, adaptation I'll coming out. I'll believe that part when I see I watched the trailer for it two weeks ago. It's out. Okay. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me ask. But it's that legend. Legends of, of the, some of the things you collect. or I mean, this is all very geographical. Sorry, Duke. I didn't Go ahead. No, that's cool. You know, like in South Carolina, you were probably collecting a lot of what was in South yeah. Carolina. Certain now types of stuff yeah. there, certain types of things here. Spiny orb weavers. Mm. It literally looked like a spider that fell out fell out of like a Mario game, like Mario 3 or something. It was crazy. It had like a white back with like these spikes on it. They were all in my backyard. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, definitely. Just different different stuff and vice versa. You know, there's stuff up here that... Are you Are you going for some kind of gothic spin on things or does it just naturally lend itself in that direction i think it kind of naturally goes in that direction because that is that's like that's who i am that's my decor that's how i decorate you know what i mean so i, I just kind of it's, well, it's all kind of natural well let me just let me just bring up the deer head the black deer it's black like that's the thing is it not only is it just a deer's head um but it's like totally black the antlers are black and it just do you want is it your intention for that to be sinister no or just aesthetically pleasing yes. in in in, in, in the blackness, in the yeah. blackness yeah. yeah sure yep so and there's nothing like oh this is for you know hanging up on your wall when you're having a ritual to raise demons it's yeah not i bad. mean you could i suppose you could, you could. right i'm not against it <laughs> but that's not that's not what I'm going for. So you could do that with a wire hanger, though, too. True. The same ceremony. I've done it. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> you know, there was something really strange about it, that when I saw this for the first time, I d dismissed it like, why, why do they have a deer's head in here? I didn't see the black. And I should have, because it's black. so obvious to it that it's unnatural. Yeah. Um, or, or, or that's what lent it the greater. Like, when I made the discovery, I'm like, wait a minute. Like I look around a little bit more and I saw more of, uh, of what you were presenting. I'm like, that's different. Like that's just, it, it's, it lends to maybe an underworld and it should lend to an underworld kind of aspect, right? Sure. Yeah. If I, had, if I had a bigger, more open room in my house, you know, that type of thing would just be awesome. Yeah. I feel like it needs to have a big room to be in though, you know, but uh, that is just, you know, I really like that. And that's one of it the It actually newer looks pieces. pretty great right there, I <laughs> yeah, have to say. It's, it's awesome. I'm not against leaving it there for a while if you're into that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I think he looks pretty natural over that couch. That's, that, that's your newest piece? Yes. Mm, yeah. I thought. How, how, how'd that end up manifesting? Um, I come across old vintage, I guess, um, taxidermy that looks pretty beat up. Um, and I just come across that sort of thing in my travels and I'll usually snatch them up and, and change them up. I'm actually working on a piece right now. Um, it does have faux horns. However, it is going to be pretty nasty. So same idea. It's a smaller, it's a smaller, uh, deer, deer mount. And I'll be removing the, the antlers that are in there and putting in like just crazy, crazy tall, like I said, they're faux horns, but you could never even tell. But uh, have you always been in uh, antique circles? Oh yeah, yeah, you have, haven't you? One hundred percent. My dad that actually makes it easier to come across out of these two. One hundred percent. Another another thing that my dad got me into when he when I was younger, um, he was all about. He actually had a small antique shop in Farmington, um, but he used to bring me with him. You know, him and my old stepmom would go and um, uh, go to auctions and things like that. And they had a table at the the Brunswick big flea market there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of time there when I was a kid walking around and just looking for stuff. You know, I wasn't obviously looking. I, I was into yellow glass and pig figurines <laughs> at that point. For some weird reason, I had this like massive collection of pig figurines. Now, I remember uh, getting getting all my stuff back when I was older from when I was younger. I was like, what? Like, I don't, I don't understand what I was thinking. But it just gave me something to do to walk around. But I saw a lot of things, and I did. I learned a lot from my dad, whether I knew that I was or not you know it just he did he gave me 
he gave me an eye for a lot of that stuff and a lot of knowledge. Uh, when I look back a little bit more on my relationship with my dad or the influence uh, from both of my parents, but in particular speaking of my dad, I, it, it's almost like, oh, I'm 35 in some place where like dad's lesson made sense right then and there Yeah. in time, wherever I was or something like that. I'm like, oh, we're slow to this sometimes. Isn't that wild how it all works out like that? Yeah. And it's continual. And I think, uh, I mean, we get a greater impact off that from people too, if we're listening to people, but I think it's because we put parents at a mentor level too about, we hope that yeah. there's greater lessons being in. But and sometimes we resist. In us. Yes, we, we do. We resist it just because, you know, we just, that's what you do. Kids want to resist their parents. Yeah. You know? It's and because we want to be our own, have yeah. our own identity yeah. as yeah, fast yeah, that's as we right. can. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, I feel like maybe I should have listened a little bit more. But there's always that better other late part than of ever. our lives so that we got to find ourselves before we're going to yeah. going to really move forward. Yeah. yeah. The more you discover about yourself, the more you look back on those life lessons that you, you know, things start to make sense as you go forward oh, and yeah. you put those connections together. Even understanding your parents. Can you hand me the skull? Oh yeah. Speaking of parents. Um Oh, wait, if I can, there was a question that I wanted to ask, or, or you want to get into that? Go ahead and get into that, because uh, mine oh, can come anytime. So we I was just going to say, this is the piece that I bought, actually, from Nikki for my mom. Was it Mother's Day or was it Christmas? I think it was Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Yeah. What type yeah. of animal skull is it? That's a deer. It's a deer? Yep. And I what's... think when I, so when we had gotten this, I uh, had been aware of what you did, and I remember one day just being like, oh, wow, look at this cool one that she's making. And I'm like, why the hell haven't I bought my mom one of these things yet? Or how, how come nobody has? I had to ask my brothers Such and sisters, and I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I asked my, my family members, I'm like, has anybody gotten mom one of those things from, from Mike's girlfriend, Nikki, yet? Because, you know, we all know Mike, and, like, at the time, we were just getting to know you. And I was like, anybody get mom anything yet? And they're just like, no. I'm like, Phew. Let's get mom something. This is right up her alley. And this is, um, I love the green, the fact that it's a candle holder. And uh, if you knew my mom, you would know that this is right up her alley. She loves all sorts of, you know, unique um, and kind of odd things. She's really a huge fan. And this was the centerpiece of a Halloween display she had at her house too, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. General, generally speaking, uh, about people the the first time they come across uh, an exhibit that you may have put together or had a chance to see it or the feedback that you get from on social media how do what are people looking like how do they respond often to it's, seeing it it's all pretty positive is it yeah yep um i'm is it because you're paying respect to the whole process? Yeah, I, mean, I is think that what so. You think it is like you've always been kind of you've curated yourself to the point, or you've. Yeah, and and I think I've proven that it's not, you know, evil or you know gruesome or and it's it's I feel like it's done in good taste. Yeah, of you course. Know? Um, I'm kind of particular to you about what I do post. Um, I'm not going to post. The, the kitten on social media yeah. just because that is a sacred ground almost kind, on social media. It, it is, yeah. you know, and I think that it would almost create like a shock value that I'm really not looking for. Right. Mm -hmm. Not on social media. Right. But amongst your friends. And sure. Whatnot. And like it's a social like, well, event or something, you know? Right. Like when you had me, you manipulated me into touching that raccoon penis. Yes. <laughs> Which doesn't look like what you think it looks like. It looks like a like a little toothpick bone. I think Yeah, and what's funny is that you the way that you were touching it, you were saying how <laughs> soft it was. Oh well, it was. <laughs> they call that a stroking motion. Well, yes. <laughs> naturally it just kinda right. ends up like that. <laughs> <laughs> but um but everything you do put out is really cool and you actually you make your own is it tiktok that you're using to yeah. make the cool videos that you make i mean mm -hmm. i gotta like i like to make video and edit video and what you do 
like with your own stuff, you're making really cool video with cool music and stuff. You're doing all, you're all doing, you're doing, and you're doing everything on your own. The marketing, the advertisement, yeah. the videos, the pictures. All of it in between momming. Yeah. Mm, so yeah, right. luckily I'm at a point where my son is in school full time all day. Yeah. So it's. It allots you that time. Yeah. Like you that I, that I didn't have before. There's no school tomorrow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to be getting less. We're all going to be getting less done. Yes. You know. Right. Yes. Yeah. But what does your son think about all this stuff? It's all very normal to him. Yeah. It's not a thing. Not at all. He's just eating cereal out of like a skull. Yes. Like, Every like, day. Oh, That's we, what we have. Do you have any clean bowls? <laughs> yeah. You really? Like, yeah. I fashion utensils out of bones chicken bones coyote leg bones that's that's what we eat from <laughs> that's i'm just awesome. kidding what's <laughs> what, what's a for long-term preservation of like animal skull skulls what do you what kind what do you have to apply to it over it or or you don't no so it will naturally degrade though or or, or does it or it's no. not like no that. uh-uh no are there better environments i mean i i haven't had like a piece last hundreds of years well, just yet no, no, that's, so that's a, that's, a good, that's a good question Could get it closer you, yes. I, I, like right? you, do, you don't find bones that are like just perfect and immaculate and white like that what no, do you do, god no what do you do to prep a bone or a skull to get it to look like that uh yeah i just i i call it processing um and there's sometimes it's super easy sometimes it isn't a majority of the stuff that I found yesterday um, will have to be processed probably mostly through the winter in order for them to reach that type of... The sweet spot. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's um, a couple of different things you have to do. You have to degrease them. So what I'd probably... I haven't done it yet. I went through the, the hall yesterday and got everything kind of organized so that I can process this week or start start to process, but... Uh, in five gallon buckets, I'll just use simple Dawn, the red. I'm mean, sorry, the uh, the red. What am I? What am I thinking? The blue. Um, you can get a red Dawn, can't you? Oh, that would be great. There's the movie Red Dawn. Oh, is but there? But you could probably okay. get red <laughs> red colored Dawn soap. You must. I, I don't feel know. like it comes in all colors of the rainbow. I wish. Maybe I don't know that red Maybe number five. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Okay. But yeah, just a simple blue Dawn in some hot water um, and change it out every few days and then switch over to just peroxide and water and just let it peroxide do its thing. Water. Yeah. It, makes it me seems think, simple, but it's not. No, it's it, gross. Yeah, it sounds like it takes a while. It Do you, does. And like the water, I imagine, is grody at the end. Oh, right? wicked. Yeah. yeah. It makes me think of that scene from Predator where the Predator, you know, got one of the commandos and it shows him up in the tree and he's just like steaming the skull and it comes out perfect <laughs> and he's just admiring. I just imagine you like taking it out of the bucket and just admiring <laughs> this fresh white skull yeah. and whatever. Six yeah. months later. Yeah, yeah right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> predator made, made it look easy. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Well skilled. It's awesome. Um, I just want to bring up animals. You oh gosh. and live animals. Oh my gosh. Okay. Weird, weird dynamic between you and and dogs. Okay. Dogs I know are wishy washy around you sometimes. <laughs> That's super hurtful. Well, Duke. <laughs> but, but, but but you know you know what I'm talking about. Though. I do. I do. Is and honestly, any, I think okay. So you know what I'm implying. Share share with us. So. Or, there's a dog whom you both, everybody knows, okay? Yes, yes. Goes by the name of Marvel. Mm. We all know Marvel. We know Marvel. Yes. Very sassy. Has anybody ever tried to exercise that dog? I don't know. You know, in the I think it way? should be considered. <laughs> okay. no, is it just Marvel or, or do dogs smell bones and animals on you? Honestly, it's just been out. Marvel it's and just your Marvel. dog. Uh, and Lexi. That's oh, too Lexi too? Yeah. Lexi was a little weirded out by uh, by Nikki also. However, it was the boots. The common denominator oh, yeah. is these combat right. boots that right. I wear all the time. They used to be my everyday. Well, I think I think we had kind of jokingly tossed around, like, they, they must smell the animals on her or something. Yeah. But I didn't know if maybe that Dude. was actually Wait. a thing or not. You're cutting out. But yeah, you have to be careful where you're touching those wires, Amber. Okay, so yes, Sorry I did not that. mean to, um, you know, imply that animals hate you or whatever. But I just thought, <laughs> I just thought maybe they just like you know smelled the bones and. Yeah, no, you're not wrong, um, but 
it definitely seems like it's mostly Marvel. Wouldn't it be funny though if like, you know, a woman who was psychic was just around you and she's like, There's there's spirits of animals all around you. Yeah. You they're just they're attached to you. I don't know why. <laughs> but they're everywhere. You know, I could just I could just imagine something like that happening. Yeah. Uh, Carol Ann. Yeah, right. <laughs> Go into the light, Carol Ann. One of Ezra's teachers actually said something along those lines to him. Mm. Yeah. It, you know, I think Ezra was talking about what I do, and the teachers were, con- or the teacher was conveying something along those lines. There must be a lot of animal spirits, or because he said something like that to me, and I'm like, okay. You know, like, <laughs> thank you for giving that idea to my small child. <laughs> it's just, Ezra's it just, just like, <laughs> Yeah, where Mine. it was just so normal before. Yeah, <laughs> but not to say that animal spirits follow you, but I mean, you got a lot of yeah animal stuff. Definitely a lot of scents for what, sure. What's in that little jar right there? This one right here. Yeah, this is a uh, possum paw. This is actually I, I one of the I first. You, I think I saw you processing one. Did you make a video of you doing something with paws recently? Uh, it looked like you had them sitting in salt or something. Yep, like that. those were actually snapping turtle. What would you what would you call those hands paws mitts mitts I think oh. the technical word is mitt are they no, is it no, oh wow know. that sounded convincing it did though <laughs> yeah, I bought okay. it that's where the term mitt comes from it's uh, a turtle's, turtle's do you know belly. how to sex a turtle squeeze their belly <laughs> just squeeze them like this <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've tried how do you do it <laughs> it must be one of their mitts well the females have claws <laughs> yeah. on their mitts Oh, and the males don't. Right. Or their males have shorter claws. They have no claws. Why is it in the animal world, like the female version of every animal is always a little more badass in some sense? The males are always way more pretty. Prettier. Like ducks, mallards, right? Mm, A lot of birds. Yeah, a lot of birds. A lot of birds. Mm -hmm. The male of the species is always more attractive. Don't tell. Strange. Don't don't tell the women animals that. Or (laughs) Or more colorful. Yes. Right. You're, you're They're going to work hard. You're going to get yeah. all these male animals yeah, right. in the doghouse tonight, Nikki. Yeah. Stop telling them all their wives are, <laughs> are ugly and they're beautiful. You're just going to yes. get them in trouble with their wives. Well, the women are more hardcore. They are. It's an even they balance. They tend to be. It's an even balance. Do you get people who send you stuff through the mail through uh, different locations all the time? Oh, yeah. All, all through the United States or, or does this go international? Um. I, Morto is international. Okay. Yes. I had two orders the year before last go to England. So nice. I thought that was pretty sweet. Very nice. Wow. Yeah. That yep. is really cool. Yeah. Do you have any regular customers? Not out of the country, but, but here, yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like people who just appreciate it or they have like some sort of... I have Business customers on the itself? other side of the country whom I've never met face to face, but I consider them like BFFs for sure. That's when you know you have a successful business when you just literally have clientele and you don't know a lot about them, but your business is your, like your connection with them is so good. And like, that is, that's an awesome sign. Yeah. That's really no, cool. there's so many, there's so many people like that. Well, um, it is such an uncommon kind of interest to have on the surface of it for a lot of people. Or at least that's, I suppose I generalize. That's the way I felt at first. I was like, oh, well, this isn't something I'm going to come, come across every day for sure. But it was one of the few times I have come across it too. I can't count more than maybe once or twice before. And that was more laboratory setting type stuff. Yeah. It wasn't, yeah. wasn't this... Uh, wasn't because somebody has a passion to look into it a little bit deeper and to be to excel at it or be good at it, which is because they love it, which is what you and people who are who are within the circle who would like to purchase have share that same common goal, right? Yeah. Well, since yep. I since I've met Nikki, I remember like just I never really had much of an interest in taxidermy at first, and like I'd heard of it, but I'd never really thought much of it. When I saw something applied in such an aesthetic way that became pleasing to me, all of a sudden taxidermy and all this stuff is on my radar. And it's like, oh, well, I mean, I see now. Like I can appreciate kind of the appeal to some of it. And now that I've met Nikki, like I look at things with kind of a new perspective where I'm like, oh, 
wouldn't it be cool if Nikki could make me one of those? And like, it's different things. But for example, there was this like fantasy video game I was playing where there's like a creature there that's this forest creature. And like, it could, it could, it could be something Nikki could put together. It has a skull like this with horns. And like, I remember asking you, I think I asked you about like how much it would cost to commission you to make something like that. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't until it became on my radar that I, you know, kind of became an appreciator of this stuff. And now I can see things just in my life where I'm like, oh, Nikki could probably slap together something really cool. It's way more materials. common. It's way more common than one would think. You know, uh, I've done a few events where little old ladies will come by the table and, you know, just kind of peek in, look in, and then I'll get into conversation with them. And they're not necessarily interested in anything on the table, but they'll tell a story. There was a lady that told a story about how she's had a cat skull her entire life and it's in her recipe box in her kitchen. She found it when she was a kid, you know, or another one that had uh, a porcupine quill, you know, like choker necklace of sorts. that has been passed down generation to generation. It's just so common. So common, whether it's, you know, like I said, like somebody is hunting or well, when somebody goes on, when somebody gets into taxidermy, let's what's like the most common application of it? Like what is like what's what's the most common like job you can get with taxidermy? Is it always some creative thing where you're just making a piece for someone or does it no, serve some sort of commercial purpose? Yeah, I think it's more commercial. I think more so up here. If somebody decides to be a taxidermist, I think it's you know, probably to do something like that, to make, you know, a, a deer mount or something. Pets? Is taxidermy on pets a thing? It oh, can, it can be. It can be. Uh, there is actually this artist in California, um, and she she does soft mounts, soft mount taxidermy. Which means? Uh, it, it's almost like a stuffed animal. You can hold it. You oh, know, wow. You can cuddle it, but it's it's a real, it's a real, Damn. you know, animal. That, that feels... A raccoon, whatever. But she just started taking on people's pets. Do you do that? No. Soft mounts? No. No. I haven't messed with soft mounts yet. I haven't. Um, I do have a couple of pelts. I have uh, a bobcat pelt. pelt. I have a uh, an Arctic fox pelt. I just, you know, like I said, find stuff in my travels. I hit a lot of estate sales and yard sales flea markets the whole nine so yeah if i can we love a good yard sale yeah oh yeah i love that um but yeah you never know what you're going to stumble on do you yeah no Uh uh-uh but i won't i can't do pets though i can't you talked about the story so that people can't do pets because like you just can't bring yourself to do it yeah like doing doing the kittens were fine creating the wet specimens for those because it was It was almost like almost like satisfying in a way because they were they were I don't want to be gruesome but they were they died they were dead at birth the mother that birthed uh, a litter of five kittens three of them passed two of them lived um and and even that person that called me to see if I would want the three kittens I met that lady off of Facebook marketplace buying plants when I got my apartment like a year and a half ago. You know what I mean? So it's totally random, but she's into, you know, darker things, metal music, things like that. So Mm -hmm. I was like, here's a card. This is what I do type of thing. So that right there unknowingly created, you know, a, a really good connection because I got three kittens out of it. So when getting those, bringing, almost bringing them back to life, that's what I felt like I was doing with positioning them and, injecting the formalin and and things like that so it was essentially giving them new life how long have practices like this been uh, how long have we as like forever is it like forever since civilization i would say so definitely yeah um i mean the well, if you think about it the like victorian era and whatnot that you know, that, that was a, a sign of being you know the elite was having mm-hmm taxidermy and things like that and that's kind of when those laws were implemented too because people just started slaying like anything to put in their house you know to look oh really yeah Yeah, right right you know what i mean all those birds birds are a big no-no why are those birds oh why because they're just federally 
protected oh okay. and they're so beautiful okay. that right. nothing you know what i mean it wouldn't stop yeah. anybody from taking a yeah sure a pistol in their backyard and just taking out all the pretty birds i thought that was just a threat yeah. Well, that's but. good. That's good that there's sort of, you know. Yeah, there's... but it stinks for me because if I see like a barn owl on the side of the road, you know, I can't mess with it. Yeah. Oh, oh, in that way. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So, so there's, no there's actually, there's like whatsoever. a lot of, there's a lot of laws and rules that you actually totally. do need to take. A... Yeah. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Crazy. It is. How much to do a human? Free. Price. Tell me a Free. price. Oh. Free. Who is it? You what? Really? You have rape? I, I can't you tell you any names. Race? I can't tell you any names. No, there, there'll be a rich guy out of nowhere. It's like, you know. just No, like, human stuff is really popular. Well, I, uh, we, I don't mess with it, though. So so the, what it makes me think of is Body Worlds, which is a an exhibit. We yeah. saw it. I, I brought my family down to Massachusetts like a couple years ago. In Boston. And at the Boston Museum yep. of Science was Body Worlds. And it was literally. Oh, that so killer. It was literally human bodies in different posing but like you could see their organ systems or their or like a, you know their nervous system or their vascular system and it was all I would say laid they have out like, they're like playing football and you could just see like their their muscles uh, and their bones. that makes me all queasy I don't yeah like you couldn't like do that. that i don't like that it was yeah, pretty I surreal i don't get into human stuff i don't i don't like that but that would be a cool exhibit to visit. It was pretty wild. But, you know, at the same time, it's uncomfortable. My son, Adrian, you know, obviously was like, you know, not into it. He wasn't? <laughs> no, no. 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 My daughter, Gabby, kind of, you know, um, wasn't really creeped out by it. But Adrian was a bit I disturbed. like how you brought your entire family to a building of dead people. Well. <laughs> yeah, who thought that was? It was, the, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was an exhibit at the Museum of Science. So we went to the, we went to the Omni Theater before and yeah. saw like yeah. dinosaurs or something oh, like that. that. Was, that was, was a no-brainer. Cool. Uh -huh. There was a little intro by Leonard Nimoy. Did you know he's from Boston? No, I didn't he's know like, that. this is Leonard Nimoy. I grew up two blocks from the Mugar Theater where you are right now. And like, it was just, I, that, that trip we took was awesome. Let me just say that and I'll always remember. But yes, Body World's kicked ass. How did and he get rid of that accent? Good question. He's a fine actor. Yeah, he is a fine actor. Um, but that basically, it was human taxidermy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something I'm never going to forget. And I remember it was just, you know, these were people that were alive. Isn't it like a German dude who does that? Could be. He's like the only guy in the world that knows how to preserve or something like that. Preserve. Oh my gosh. It, it's, it's so wild because the things you're looking at, you're like, that's actually lungs. Yeah. You know, that's actually a spinal cord. Like it's very, it was really wild. Um, but that's kind of something like, again, after I met you, I'm like, oh yeah, wow. Well, I mean, Nikki could potentially do something like that if, yeah. <laughs> if she the had price the resources. Right. Yeah, the price is I right. I got bills due. I'm just totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> What's inside the vase? Right here? Yeah. Oh, just flowers. Okay. Nothing night cool. Shade. Just check it. Poisonous sure I'm not missing shade. anything. Yeah, no, I think there's like some turkey feathers in there too I found on the road. But. No, I, I, I guess I always feel like there must be with, within you to, to have a comfort zone with, with, uh, with death, kind of, with that, and, and the people yeah. who would be into it. Mm -hmm. How, how, how different though? How do you think, or how do you feel like it's different in you? What, what that attraction is than it would be for say like somebody like not to say I'm not attracted to death sure. in some ways, but, but you're not I exposed understand to it, it as a different way. Right. Yeah. Uh, you definitely a get almost thing for me too, because I'm a nurse and I've been around yeah. death more than yeah. the average I'm person. I'm sure you get almost and like I, desensitized just like a tiny bit. Do you? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. When you're around, I mean, for me, the first time I was around a dead body, the first time doing post-mortem care, I remember just thinking, like, this guy is going to wake up any second. But, like, you know, he didn't. But you, I just felt like he was going to. And then, you know, like, the first time, it's kind of, it's very odd and very surreal. But then after that, you're just kind of going through the motions. I will say, though, it's always important to stay respectful of what you're of what you're dealing with oh, like sure. the person or, or the animal, I would say for me, it's all about maintaining respect for the dead when you're, when you're around them. That's my takeaway from being yeah, around it. Sure. Let's, you know? let's what I see with what you do here too, taking care of de the dead or, or I don't know. You want to elaborate or have we you know, already gone actually, a little far, far enough on that? If we want to get real skis. Yeah. Uh, 
before I started Morto, my best friend passed away in 2013. I was living in Wilmington at the time. And uh, lose and when I when she passed away, it, it changed who I was at that point. It was like a complete 180. Just everything. My whole world fell apart. Um, I very soon after got pregnant with my son. So it was like all these crazy life wow. events, you yeah. know, I didn't really get to process fully my friend passing away. You know, I didn't get mm. to feel like all the, all the feels, all the emotions just kind of had to put everything on pause. So when Morto kind of became a thing in 2015, I was still grieving. I was still definitely grieving on the inside, but I was just way too busy, you know, in raising my son. Um, but I can distinctly remember, and I was talking about this earlier when I was practicing on the mice that I got from Petco, you know, practicing the wet specimens and stuff. When I was injecting them and I was watching with my own eyes these little things that were obviously dead, look seemingly alive in my hand that process in itself i think helped me heal it was from it was therapeutic for you 100 percent. and i think that the name of you know morto vivente i think i think you know that whole experience that i had to go through you know i think that's where that comes from too just because i at one point was so desperate to give you know something i loved life again and couldn't, you know, this I can. I can just continuously over and over and over give something life. Yeah, and you know, it was like it was like a rebirth for you. Yes, 100%. You know, it was a new phase. You said you had to start brand new. I mean, you kind of had to, yeah. you know, it was, it was, it was being, being born again. Yeah, yep. Interesting. 100%, and it's been, it's been, uh, I'm very fortunate. I'm very fortunate. Everything that I come across, whether it's, you know, an animal or a skull or a bone or something in a thrift store, I know that it's eventually going to be something that's going to be turned into something that's going to benefit my family, which is ultimately the bottom line. That's awesome. You know, what do you, um, what do you got going on? Bunch of stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you obviously, we, we all went and saw you at, um, the, the studio, which yes. is an art studio here on Lisbon street. It was an art walk recently. You had a whole setup. My mom bought this, big giant awesome, mirror a mirror that i'm you know i feel like if i look into it i'm gonna see bloody mirror Your uh, bloody mary or like saying, the devil itself if i look into it <laughs> she keeps saying bloody mary bloody mary your mom's wild well mm, I, it's, she it's, is it's she one is. of those mirrors where you if you go up and touch <laughs> it your fingers will like just go into it into yeah. like an alternate dimension, yeah, another dimension. and you gotta pull back yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah my mom bought that awesome she did. mirror she did. you were at this art walk like mm -hmm. what's going on with you in the future what are you doing She's going to be, she was telling me, I'll give her a moment, tattoo shops, baby. Yes, yes. Um, I say by the 23rd of this month because that is my deadline. I will be fully set up um, by October 23rd at Align Tattoo. Um, I've been working with Angie Whiteley. Um, she is a local tattoo artist. She's amazing. She's such a great person. I don't know if you guys know her or not. No, I don't. No. Um, but she's just, aside from being an amazing artist and an amazing tattoo artist, she is just one of those people that every time you get to spend time with, they just fill your cup up, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I can't say that there's a lot of people that can fill my cup. Mm -hmm. It's kind of difficult. I feel like I'm the one that's filling everybody else's cup. You need somebody else who you can turn to to recharge yeah. without feeling like you're pulling too much. And she does it. Yeah. She is just, she's so supportive. She's so positive. Um, and she's, she's been supportive of me f from the get ever since I met her, uh, when I first, I've known her for a long time, but in terms of like a business relationship, um, it's, it's taken off since I moved back about three years ago, like three and a half years ago. Um, but as of recently, she's moved, um, to a different location. She had her shop on Lisbon street in Lewiston and moved, um, to, uh, to Lisbon falls and the space there is just nothing short of absolutely gorgeous is it right in town lisbon falls you know when you're yep. you're kind of going out from lewiston 
And you go right around that, that little church. bend. Yep. Exactly. It's right there. And it's on, uh, it's actually 13 Union Street. And it's, when you're going through town right there, you'll see the Aroma Joes. And you just bang that left if you're coming from Lewiston. And it's like literally right there on the right. Lisbon Falls, you know, for me, really cool place with a cool vibe. And I, I can't it really tell you is. Exactly it's growing. Why. There's something about Lisbon Falls I really like. Yeah, me it, too. It, it makes me think of uh, Stephen King's youth because he was from Lisbon Falls. I feel was like, he? I feel like the film Stand by Me. Okay. Yeah. Took place in like Lisbon Falls, Durham area. Oh yeah, I could totally see that That's, with like the train tracks and the yes. river and, and everything. And, and, and yeah. like Lisbon Falls always just has kind of like a cool vibe. There's cool old school buildings yeah. there. Crazy now that the mill's gone. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, I love going to that town. So any yeah. real reason to and go. And the spot that she has is gorgeous. Like I said, it's it's a it's a longer building and and she's got an end spot. Um and it's just it's so beautiful. Hardwood floors. They, you know, kept like the tin ceiling and the tin walls and just yep. like all all the old character. And she's they gonna, restored it. And she's gonna be featuring some of your stuff. Yeah. Um she's actually given me a side there, so I have a, a little retail spot. That is cool. Yeah, and it's storefront too, so it's like window. It's gonna be amazing. I'm very excited. Yeah, to be yeah. able to get that day to day action yeah. or looks. Yep. Yeah, that's important for yep. sure. Just people driving to by that. too. Thank to you. you. That. And that, and we'd love to do something in the future as well. I was talking about putting together like an exhibit of sorts. Oh yeah. Or kind of a combination of and theme it with. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna theme it with. Food. Painting. Painting, yes, painting. Yeah, I've actually been... Um, so food's not a good idea. I mean, maybe. No. <laughs> make, some, make some special brownies. Right? Oh, right? now we're talking. Yeah, that'll make it interesting. <laughs> Sold on the idea already. Yeah. Uh, no, but we were talking earlier about, you know, I've been trying to think outside the box and trying to think of different avenues to generate more income because, you know, it's not like, like I was explaining, it's not a product that I can just hire 10 people to like replicate or, you know what I mean? Get like an assembly line. It just right. doesn't work like that. Right. Of course. It just, I need more time. I need more stuff, yeah. I need all the things, you know, so I can only make what I can make. Um, I wish, I wish there was like more time in the day. Oh, same. You know 24 I mean? hours is not enough. Like if you offered, if you offered me a million dollars or like, you know, more more hours in a day. I'd be hard pressed to not to not take more hours in a day. No, I'd take the million. You crazy! <laughs> I would take you the crazy million. Crazy Americans always wanted to work that hard. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess take so. the money and run. That's not that but Not great. that I'm not. I just uh, I don't. I, you know, there is this. Yeah, it's tough. You've got to be able to balance it enough where you're doing things that you don't mind doing in order for that to successfully be a That's part of the who key. you are. That is if you truly have, the key. If you're engaged and you're loving it, then then it does and makes it a little bit easier to swallow. Yeah, but I wouldn't. Yeah, and I even think, better if it I gives you I'm fire inspired, in your belly, right? Right, yeah. right. But I, I don't think I'm necessarily inspired for the same things. Say like a generation before us, which uh, which seemed driven on more like wealth than this opportunity for that. I think we're I think we're looking at things differently, like the quality of you know, what you can get out of life. How much can you explore what you want to explore in life? Because there are limited hours and days and weeks and years. That's the truth. Yeah. So. And that even plays with the people that you keep close mm. to you. I always say four quarters is better than a hundred pennies. So I live mm, by that. So do, yeah. do you have a job? This is my job. That is. Do you, this do is you, her do job. you think, do you feel like it's a job? Sometimes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. When I've been dealing with my kid all day and he's going buck wild at school and I got to deal with that and come home and make dinner and clean the house and clean the cat box. And I'm like, hi, I have a giant order that needs to go to Tennessee tomorrow morning by nine. Sick. <laughs> I'll be up all night. I was going to say pulling all nighters is probably not yeah. uncommon. Absolutely. Are you more creative at night? Yes, definitely. You do have the limit. <clears throat> excuse me. You do have the limitations of what can one person produce, or in, yeah, in a moment. It is super limited. It is, isn't it? Does but just that to, redefine what you choose to work on. Then what's that? Does that sort of redefine the some of what you have to work on? Yeah. In in like from a time restraints point of view. Oh to, sure. You know how much you can recover off of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, it does, doesn't it? It does. It takes a lot of organizing just to have things kind of ready to go mm -hmm. surrounded. I'm, yeah. I need to be surrounded by those things so I can be like, okay, 
I can see, I mean, it looks chaotic. Um, and hopefully you guys can see my workspace at some point. I try to keep it clean. I try to keep it organized, you know, the whole uh, organized chaos type of thing. I know where things are in a roundabout way. Um, but no, they have to be ready to go and I have to have just everything everywhere. But to me, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, does that make sense? It does. Yeah, it does. Where, um, you know, if people were interested in what you have going on, how can they, how can they find you and how can they find the stuff that you offer and how can they, you know, get something from you? Sure. I always tell people to check out my Instagram just because from the start, that's where I've logged every piece, everything, everything, every journey, every bone hunt, whatever. What's the Instagram name? It is. It's Did just it? more Toby Vente okay. oddities. Okay. Yep. Um, I do have a website in the works. We worked on it today. It is under construction. Excellent. Yes. So that That's would just nice be step. more Toby Vente oddities.com. Use Instagram because it is more visually. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it just everything all in one place. So somebody's able to scroll. You know. Do you have a store set up through it? No. No. Okay. I didn't know no. if that was. No, I used to have an Etsy, like I said, but I just kind of did away with it because I just wasn't into the whole fees and, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, mostly just social media, you know, and stuff that I post. And for a while there, it was, I felt like nothing was really being made to be posted to buy just because I was doing so many custom pieces, mm -hmm. you know, so it was very few and far between, but I'm just dedicating literally every minute that I have that is free to something that is more toe related at this point. Have you thought how it would play to show some of the process of, Oh yeah. Creating? Or, or do you already? Yeah, I, yeah, I do that. Yeah, there's videos yeah. out there of her doing stuff. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no, I it's fine. I, the, uh, I just, the, I do the that. The turtle mitts. That <clears throat> was something where I was like, when uh, I was uncovering them out of like the, the salt or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I the remember seeing that process. and I remember just being like, Whoa, yeah. What, what right, made you what decide that you wanted to share the process? What, how long ago did you start feeling like you wanted to share that on, on social media? Um, Has it always been? Yeah. I think it's always been. Um, but I think as of recently, probably the last year, I've become more committed to it, mm -hmm. to wanting, you know, to, to show a little bit more. Cause I find that people are interested in That's that sort of That's a fascination for yeah. a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah. It would be. Yeah. yeah. And it kind of, I feel like there is some people it kind of sets me apart from the people that say they do what I do, but don't really do what I do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Showing that I do what I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I put in, I put in the you time. In I, the get, time. I get in that nitty gritty. I get dirty. Yeah. yeah there's no question. <laughs> just following you on social media. You, you just, you're like narrating yourself going out and doing these things. Like today you posted about a bone hunt you went on. And yeah. Like, yeah. It's, she keeps people pretty well up to date as to what she's doing. It's, it's, you keep things pretty interactive, I would they, say. They get pumped for it. Yeah. You know, the more, I mean, the, the, not followers, but you know, the, I don't, I don't even, the more to audience, I don't know, yeah. but yeah. You should, um, you should make a special piece and send it to Tony Todd. Oh, God, Candyman. Who's Tony so Todd? So one of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite. And why is he Candyman? One of my favorite <laughs> stories. Like the Candyman. The Candyman. No, no. The movie. horror film? Yes. yes. The actor who played the Candyman. Um, one of my, I think my Which, favorite. Which, uh, the, the older Candyman? The older Candyman. Yeah, the not, the, not the new. Is that it's, 90s? It's one of my favorite, 90s. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. It's one of my favorite the stories OG. I've ever been told in my life. Yeah. Was um, Nikki cock blocking <laughs> Tony Todd, a.k.a. Candyman <laughs> at a bar. I cock blocked the Candyman. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it would just be funny. I did. <laughs> I really did. What'd you do? What, what happened? Long story short, uh, the Candyman... <laughs> Bought me and a girlfriend a shit ton of uh, whiskey shots, all the Jameson. Can I please buy you some whiskey shots? Yes. You and your, you and your friend. Yes. He actually <laughs> didn't. He didn't talk like that. <laughs> no, but he, <laughs> but he kind of has like a, he's a very like, anyways, yeah. continue. Uh, but it was at this bar called Brown Coat and it's an old, it was an old theater that was converted into a, uh, a karaoke bar if you will but it still had like the the old seats and like the stage and stuff i actually brought an ex-boyfriend that came to visit <laughs> he did uh what was it 
uh, Black Sabbath's War Pigs, and oh, he was just yeah. like moshing across the stage like <laughs> while he was singing. It was really funny. Uh, but yes, back to Candyman. So, but yeah, long story, very long story short. No, no, yes, keep it going. <laughs> very long story short. Uh, we all went outside to go smoke a cigarette and we're pretty drunk. And I turned around and my girlfriend and Candyman were gone. And Uh-oh. I saw Candyman's car, you know, the driver or whatever. It was like this like super nice white Cadillac or something. It said Candyman on the license plate. <laughs> no. <doubt>. Candyman 69. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> But yeah, no, I ran down the road and I was, I was like, get out of the car. I'm not going to say your name, but I was punching the back of the car and I opened the driver, door. Step on it. Step yeah. on it, driver. <laughs> I opened the door and I, there she was sitting in the, sitting in the car with Candyman and I pulled her out. I was like, you were not going home with that dude. No. 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 Thanks for all the shots, Candyman, but not tonight. He's a demonic killer. Yeah. <laughs> Is that How his weird reputation? Is that, well, Candyman. But ever since, you know, if I'm like flipping through and it'll be like the movie, I'll take a picture of like the caption on the TV that shows the name of the movie and send it to her. Like, remember that? <laughs> remember the Candyman? <laughs> that is one of the best stories. I've heard the long version and it's just, I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a short, short you know, event. One last thing for me, if that's all right, is... Um, when uh, being surrounded by the skulls more is giving me this feeling of like this is sort of skulls, animal skulls have always been since ancient times sort of, uh, I brought it up earlier about spiritual, but maybe symbolic association with death through through art, hasn't it? Or, or am I wrong in thinking that? Have you guys, is there? No, I feel that. You know, I mean, I've always seen like um, imagery, whether it was, um, it's always held a much stronger presence in past generations before us. Why, why have we lost that? Or, or have, do we seem like we have, or are we getting back in touch with it more? I think definitely probably getting back in, I think normalizing it yeah. is super important because um, it just goes back to the, you know, humanity not liking what they don't understand it's truly that simple and i think you know when when you be you, you kind of reach a milestone where like a skull has more meaning for you and uh you know is it, it can have like sentimental value and, and make oh, you sure. make you appreciate life and it's like a life after death and you know people collect skulls and animals and like it's something they've done forever right it's yeah. there's something about you know, skulls and, and whatnot, it's like majestic and historic and, you know, a lot of meaning behind that. Just ask Glenn Danzig. He wrote a yeah. song called Skulls. Yeah. I want your skull. Right. Right. I need your skull. Want to hang it on my wall. Demon I am, face I feel. I don't know how much I trust that guy. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't actually trust Danzig. Well, I think about like human <laughs> skulls and when, I, when I've seen human Danzig, skulls. Danzig, if you're listening, I love you. I hope he is. Me too. Yes, I love you too. <laughs> Human skulls remind us a little bit more of like our own mortality. Do animal skull, but animal skulls sort of touch us differently. It's not our own mortality. It's more like life and it's fleetingness or, or something greater. Is or how it lasts. Here on Earth? <clears throat> it, it lasts even after death. I mean, you have, you have this, what was an individual animal. I would say, or maybe that's even real. Right? Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously death is real. Obviously it's inevitable, you know? But it, it it's proof. It's proof. Mm. It's real. And like what you were saying, too, like when you, when you, when you make these, these pieces of art with an animal, you're giving it purpose after death, where it was, mm-hmm. like, it was like prey mm-hmm. to a coyote, but you took it and, you know, it's, now it's, it has life after death like that. Born again? Born again. Yeah, seriously, kind of a theme, you know, an, an underlying theme with a lot of this artwork is things are just born again after they've died. It's sure pretty wild to put it in that context. The kitten, the deer, yeah. you know, the deer skull there. I mean, otherwise that kitten would have been, you know, thrown in a hole and and that it would it would have never had anything after that forgotten. Moment. Like it almost didn't even exist in the first place. 
Yeah. You would be, it'd be extremely difficult to be able to make a dent in that type of, uh, of uh, I don't know what I'm saying now. Not on this one, because I'm reaching for it no, a little I, bit further. Almost like a, dare I say, like a butterfly effect. Yeah, perhaps, right? right. Like it was supposed to be gone, but it's not. Right. Yeah, so why does it exist now? Or like what's it supposed to serve? Yeah. So we only know changing the idea around us. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for coming into studio. Duke, was there anything else? Uh, that no, I just want to, want to uh, you know, I just want to think th thanks for coming on Nikki. I, like I've been interested in your stuff from the moment I found out about it. And I'm surprised I haven't asked you to come on like the uh, podcast a lot sooner, to be quite honest with you. I remember one day just being like, why don't I have Nikki come on? And then no, here you awesome. are. If yeah. better timing, we would maybe dump hey, this everything before is meant, Halloween, but it's all good. Yeah. We are where we should be, right? No, yes, th we thanks are. for coming on. You said up, up on the 23rd, you're going to have your stuff being shown. Yep. At, I'll have my retail spot at uh, Align Tattoo on 13 Union Street right. in and, Lisbon. And you can find more to the venting on primarily Instagram, but I, I see all your stuff on Facebook. Yep. Everything's carried over from Facebook or from Instagram and posted on Facebook. Excellent. So. Yep. Good, cool. Thanks yeah. for coming on. And the website will be up soon. Oh, yes. Yep. Is that going to be mortoviventi.com? It's going to be mortoviventioddities.com. Oddities. Awesome. Mouthful. Awesome. We'll check it out. Cool. Thanks, Thanks for having Nikki, me. Nikki, a pleasure. You guys are awesome. Thanks. It's our pleasure. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was cool.